And this is still Cosmopolitan Market on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network. And recently, there has been an avalanche of events happen in the agriculture sector. And one of the most recent is the flag off of the 2021 maize wet season farming under the, the Maize Association of Nigeria CBN Anchor Borrowers Program, which happened in Kasina State. And some other issues have also taken place in the agri sector. And to discuss on all of these issues, I have with me here my guest who is engineer Joseph Bamidele. He is the national coordinator and assistant secretary general to at the Maze or to the Maze Association of Nigeria. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for joining the program. Thank you for having me. Okay, in my intro, I did mention uh, the, the flag off of the wet planting season of the first maize pyramid and, of course, the flag off of the, ma ma of the wet plant planting season um, in Casina State under the, the CBN Anchor Borrowers uh, Program. Um, I think for the benefit of our viewers who don't necessarily know what uh, pyramids or pyramids maize planting season and all of that, what these mean, can you, can you give us um, an idea of what all of this, this means? Thank you once again for having me. Uh, let me start by, like this. Maize Association of Nigeria is different from maize farmers. It was an association incorporated in 1999. Comprises of researchers, end users, the poultry farmers, all those who are involved in maize usage. Mm. That is just, I want to give you, I would want to, that is the background. That's why it is called maize association, not maize farmers. And, uh, you know, maize is one of the magic crops. People don't know. It's just the only crop that does not have a straight line of uh, value chain. Along the line, you have a camu. We, we, we have two. You, some people use it as to cook soup. Even the, the little, the leaves, some people eat it. Some people cut it when it's fresh to fill this. So it is the only crop that does not have a straight line of value chain. You can, rice, you have one you harvest, you parboil. Next thing, you, you, you mail it, you start eating straight. For people who say that is two inch in copper, yes. But it is, it does straight line. But maize, you have branches, mm. you have agidi. So people use it. That is why we say maize is very, very important. Now, coming to the issue of the pyramid in Castina, that is just one-tenth of what was produced by Maize Association of Nigeria farmers, our farmers. We just want to show that, look, this thing is working. The Anchor Borrower Program of the CBN is working. We want to tell the world that, look, this maize was produced by the farmers, farmed by the farmers, and harvested by the farmer, aggregated by the farmer in Castina. And to let people know that the Anchor Borough program of the CBN is true, working. And it is there for people to see. We have maize in this country. We just want to tell them that we have maize. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. And of course, uh, still speaking on, on, on issues around economic diversification, yeah. uh, there's been the clamor for economic diversification for the longest time. Have all of these policies that you've seen from the government, of course, like you, we mentioned, the Anchor Borrowers Program from the CBN and policies from the Ministry of Agriculture, have all of these policies um, in any way enhanced the, 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 the move towards economic divers diversification away from oil? And if they have, in what ways have they? Perfect. Yes, they have. Some years back, the younger ones, the, the, the new generations, don't want to go into the farm. Now, you don't need to use the hoe. Your own, the government provide the seeds, provide all the input. Yours is to monitor your farm. This has encouraged the young ones to go into farming. Now, let me tell you, if you harass a farmer with your brand new car, he will look at you and laugh. <laughs> the next time you will see him after harvest, is that a better car than yours? Uh, I'm not sure I'm not going to become a farmer now. <laughs> no, I think I will advise you quickly. We need women. You know, you women are very, very passionate. Whatever we give women to handle, 
look, you, 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 you are more, you tender things. So this diversification it, by government is working. One thing people don't know in Nigeria is that we are always in a hurry. We want to get it done quickly. No, it takes time. It, it, it's, it's something that you continue to do, you improve. The, the Angkor Bora program started in, two, we started with, in 2018, maybe with about 20,000 farmers. It increased to 50. We are looking at 150 more farmers. Mm. So it has, it's now, you can see, now, people, we say there is no maize. We've shown that maize is there. And I can tell you that some younger ones, some youths don't want to even look for a job again. They feel within three months, you've made this money. Mm. And this is the preaching of the National President of Maize Association of Nigeria, Dr. Abu Abubakar. Say, look, there is money in farming. The, uh, the, the diversification of the government is working. Not minding the little, little challenges we have. Yes, this is our own period to experience this type of challenges. Others have done that. When we were younger, people, it was, uh, we heard of other countries who have passed through such what we are passing through. And I know with the commitment of all of us, we will get over this. Okay, I'm, I'm glad you made mention of the youth population because yeah. I remember when the the current uh, president of the African Development Bank yeah. uh, was Minister of Agriculture. Fantastic. He talked about making uh, farming a business. And I also remember the last week when the governor of the Central Bank mm -hmm. was uh, doing the lunch, he had made mention of involving youth in mm -hmm. agriculture. Mm -hmm. Um, to, what, or to what extent would you say the Nigerian youth has embraced farming? I, I ask this because I still, um, in my interactions with, youth, with, youth, with the youthful population, uh, I still hear um, young people say things such as, no, I would rather do a white-collar job than um, dirty myself in the farm. But I'd like to hear from you, sir. What has been, or from your point of view, how much youth popu youthful population have you seen embrace farming? The, 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 if you have the opportunity to move into the feed, I just came back from Kanji towards Wawa boundary between Benin, Republic, and Nigeria. Mm. My goodness. You will see able bodied young men, not minding whether it is who or not, all of them are there. And when they see tractors coming, people are booking, young ones. I asked one of them. What I, he speaks fluent English. I said, come, my friend. I, I speak also very well. I can read and write. I spoke. I heard he talk to me in English. I said, he said he finished from university of, one of the universities of agriculture. I said, what are you doing here? Oh, he said, <laughs> this is his business. That he's now going, after the wet season, he's going into the dry season. Mm. So he said, nobody commands him. That he commands his crops, the maize he planted. Mm -hmm. Nobody queries him. He queries the, 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 the crops. If he does not do well, he queries the seed. He queries himself. Look, the youths, let me give you an example of federal means of agriculture. They've really assisted, particularly the Association of Nigeria. They give us input at subsidized price. And in the, in the letter, they will say, youth and women. Federal Minister of Agriculture, particularly Department of uh, Agriculture, they give us, we pay a lower rate, and specifically, they say 30% for women, 25% for youth, just to make the youth to come in. And when they say this, they come in. Our coordinator for South South, if you see this young guy, he, was, he came to Castina with his personal car. In fact, somebody thought he was a university lecturer, young, able, unlike my sister, the younger <laughs> ones are coming in into this system. It is just some of them. We have some who are lazy. We, the problem is someone wants to make quick money. And it is said that no sweat, no sweet. Okay, so um, just like most sectors in the economy have been hit hard, or have been hard hit by the the COVID nineteen situation, mm -hmm. I'm sure the 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 the, your, the agricultural sector also has not been left behind. Sure. But I would like for you to tell me how 
the pandemic has affected um, maize farming and how much does um, a ton of maize go for now? Uh, let me take the first uh, this thing, the COVID-19. You know in March that was, there was no movement. The farmers could not go to the farm to tender his crop, to look. You know, the beauty, why you see, uh, if I tell you my age, an average farmer, when he goes to the farm and he sees his crop, he becomes very, very happy. Even if his temperature was up, he will <laughs> come down. Happy seeing that oh, this is the, the fruit of my labor and materialization of my endeavor. I'm sure you know that Shakespeare. He says that. So the farmer, you see, because the farmer could not go, there was no movement, there was restriction, some of the crops could not do well. Because you need daily monitoring and evaluation of your crops in the feed. If you see a crop, particularly maize, it's turning yellowish. You know something, one of the nutrients is missing. But when the farmer cannot go, when he cannot visit his farm, this really affected that. But for a ton of maize, this period of the year, every year, the price of maize goes up. All commodity. This is, if you go to market, I know you're a woman, tomato is cost now. Why? This is the period, this is rainy period. Tomato don't do well during the period. The, 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 the flowers will drop. Now the farmer too have sold what he produces last and is back into the it's just for a short period. Uh, a ton of a ton of maize now it's not more than between one eighty to two hundred thousand. How about the silos? I know before we started, uh, yeah. started the interview proper, we we're talking about silos. Yes. How many silos do we have now? Ah, uh, this is the federal government silos. We have 33 silos. Yes. And they, any, and they are functioning. This, I can say, anywhere, anytime. They are functioning. This, the, the, in fact, recently, about two years ago, we tried to, the, the federal government concessioned these silos for optimal utilization. And the federal government retains some. Just is the 30 years of uh, uh, storage. We have the, 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 the first year is the on farm, which are parents in the farm store. The second stage, we call it TIER. T -I -E -R. The second is buffer stock. The buffer stock is for the states to handle. And most of this maize we produce, supposed to be in the warehouse, the state government has to produce their own. And use this as a gap. Why the silos, which is for the federal government, it is the third tier, which is, we call it strategic. It is to be released when no other source. Mm. And in case there is any war, we should be able to feed ourselves for 28 days. Mm. So when people say there are nothing in the silos, I love. There are a lot of grains, and I know they, they, they have been managed by Nigerians, Nigerian engineers. Perfect, intelligent human being. Somebody, somebody came, a governor was saying, I, is this thing being ma managed by Nigeria? It was man it, it's been managed, and it was managed, in, and it's still being managed by Nigerian engineers. Mm, so this, yes, the silos are working and have been maintained by Nigerians, Nigerians engineers in Strategic Food Reserve Department. Mm. I know the director very well, Dr. Uh, Sule Aruna, and other intelligent uh, storage engineers in that department. So still talking about silos, um, many analysts are of the opinion that um, pyramids are a cake. Do you share in the same sentiment? Uh, you know, in though, in what I wouldn't. This one thing is, if they say it's okay, do they provide solutions? Well, with the with the advancement in technology that we've seen in recent times. That is why we did. That is why the federal government now decides to build silos. Yes, what I would have expected some of them to say is that meta silo or concrete silo. Each of them has their own advantages and disadvantages. The concrete silos is built with cement from the word concrete. It's expensive, very expensive, but efficient. The meta silos, yes, because of the, our climate, heat, you know, this movement of coal and heat, this thing. But we have the equipment, we have the manpower 
to maintain it. The pyramid which is just a temporary to show what we have produced. Mm -hmm. To show that this anchor borrower program is real. To show that this thing is working. To show that maize is available. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not something you keep permanently there. But in the silo, you can keep the grains for one year. And it will not spoil. Some people in academics will, may probably start saying, how possible? I will tell them they should go to that department and ask. What? Now, this silo spread across the different geopolitical zones. Oh, sure. Country. Sure. Sure. I, 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 I'm very, very sure that South South, we have one in Ogoja. We have one being built in Bayelsa now. In Bayelsa. Of, of course, because of the soil capacity, the, the, geo, the, the geo, geological nature of the soil of, in Bayelsa, the capacity was reduced. So all the geopolitical zones in Nigeria have one or two silos of different capacity. Okay, still on government policy, government inactions and actions. Uh, sometime last year, we saw that the CBN added maize importation to the 41 uh, banned list. Um, how has this singular action by the CBN been able to um, strengthen the maize production value chain so far? We want to, on behalf of the National President of Maize Association of Nigeria, Dr. Belo Abubakar, thank the Governor of Central Bank. For adding maize, this has encouraged people to go into the farm. Look, somebody like me, now I, I, was, I, I feel I wasted much time working in government. If I had known that farming maize, three months, just three or let's say four, five months, you're already a, a thousandaire millionaire. No, no government will pay you such a salary. So it has encouraged people to, to move to the farm. People are ready to go to the farm. For very few people, they don't, who feel, if you don't, they, let me tell you, gold is very precious. Where do you find gold? In the soil. Diamond is precious. Before you get it, you have to dirty your hands and dirty your So before you make money, before you enjoy that, this thing. So binding this thing has really encouraged us, has made farmers, particularly maize farmers, we want to thank uh, 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 Governor Emefele, the Governor of Central Bank, and his able left and his foot soldiers who are in the Department of uh, Development Finance. They are fantastic set of people. They follow you, they advise, they encourage, and they push you to do the best. Mm -hmm. So this has really encouraged us. And this is what is making the president of Mesa Association, Dr. Bela Ubaka, very happy. If you see him, you think he's a 12-year-old young man. <laughs> because he's happy his members are making it. Mm. Yes. Indeed. But um, on the other hand, I've, I've heard some people say that the ban, um, for, ban for forex, you know, for the importation of maize mm. might lead to a glut. Uh, are you, are you, are you, do you see it, see that happening? And, and if you don't, how then has, in what ways have this, has this ban in, affected um, maize planting in the country? I will, I will start from the last one. The ban has encouraged us. In this country, we've never gone into, in the large scale, dry season farming for maize. But because the maize importation was, has been banned, to bridge the gap, we are now going into dry season farming using irrigation. That is why you find out that prices of maize fluctuate, increases sometimes, and so other period of time will be, the price will be low. But if we now bridge that gap, you find there will be stability in the price. So there will be no high, just like now when you're saying the price is high. If we had done very large scale farming in dry season, you know, we'll have some, and that will bring down the, 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 the price. So that has really encouraged us. Now, glut, we can never have glut of maize. It's not, look, it's a wonderful crop. The poultry farmers, the 
man, you know what house has cost Rufe? You peel it, becomes a movita. That is our local semovita. Mm -hmm. They do it. Every, that's why I said it. It is only crop that does not have a straight line of value chain. So everybody, do you benefits. know benefits? That is pete in Hausa. They call it pete. Is uh, and uh, in some part of uh, the Ekitis in Kwara, they call it um, eda, eko eda. They, they they break it with. They, 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 it's, it's not smooth. <laughs> so they make it, you can see everyone, everybody enjoys it. So one way or the other, we use it. We've not had enough. And I know some West African countries depend on us. Mm. This, I can tell, if you go to Yola, watch the number of trailers moving. And Nigeria, through Federal Ministry of Agri, I think Food and Strategic Reserve, West African uh, food reserve sub region. We reserve food for some West Equus. So, how can World Food Program is there looking for maize to make a uh, roof for other country? In this country, we have sent food through World Food Program to other African countries. So, let's wait. So when that glows will come. Okay, so you've gone on and on and on as to how much the the the, the policies of government has impacted uh, maize farming in the positive. Yeah. But um, still talking about youth or youthful population embracing farming at this point, what sort of support uh, do we need, especially in terms of what kind of structure should we put in place to encourage more youth to yeah. um, take farming more seriously? One of the things you see the issue of collateral. The issue of collateral, even those of us who are, you bring your house, so you want to, most of these young boys don't have collateral. The only collateral I know some of them will have is their certificates. Will the banks agree to take the, 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 the degree certificate as collateral? Once you make some of these things, you look at the issue of the collateral and restructure the loan, I mean the percentage, the interest rate. Mm -hmm. Let him make it as low as possible. If the young man knows that I'm paying 25, uh, 25% or 3% because I'm a young graduate, on this thing, he will be encouraged. And you see, the farmers too, quick, early release of this money to these people. You know, agriculture is time bound. Mm -hmm. Once this loan process, documentation in the banks, did this, takes more time. Let there be short period of doing this thing, make the interest rate very low, collateral, put it aside, and I'm sure, and provide farm inputs, farm input, uh, tractors, at a very cheap rate. Farmer, you see people will go to pay, an average farmer cannot pay for plowing, harrowing, and all this, because mm. it's expensive. But once, and I know Federal Minister of Agri are doing something towards making this uh, 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 farm implement available and cheap for farmers. I'm glad you made mention of the Federal Ministry of Agri. Are you seeing enough synergy between the Federal Ministry of Agri and the Central Bank of Nigeria? Oh, yes. Yes. In what it, ways are, are you seeing those? Like, there is a, a program, uh, AFGP, been handled by Dr. Kosari, very intelligent young man. They are to, they are to use the, the associations. We are one of them. If you see the way the, this AFGP that is under Federal Ministry of Agri and CBN are working, you may think Director of Development Finance is a staff of Federal Ministry of Agri or Dr. Kosari is a staff of uh, CBN. Two of them are moving. There is great synergy because they have the interests of the farmers and the country at heart. Mm. Sure, they, 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 they are. Mm. Okay, so this is not the first time that youth are being wooed into farming. Yeah. And on one hand, we have the these policies from government and the encouragement to mm. youth to take farming uh, a lot more seriously. And on the other hand, we have the rising cases of insecurity. That's right. How has insecurity impacted farming in recent times? Yeah, we need to be sincere. 
we just have to be sincere. Yes, it has really affected food production. You know, Bono, the Lake Chad exists. That is where we produce most of our wheat. Now that place, because of the insurgent, because of the Boko Haram issue, that has been reduced or stopped drastically. Mm. Even our farmers, some were slaughtered, some were attacked. The Brinning Wari exists in Kaduna. That area is where they produce maize very well. But the farmers cannot move inward. You can't use uh, uh, granated fertilizer urea in the north is because this bad element uses it for explosive. So yes, it has reduced. Yes, it has re affected the, the 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 rate at which agriculture will have grown. But the resilience of the farmers mm. still make us to be. We can feed ourselves. God forbid if there is war today. I can tell people will be surprised. They may not agree with me that we can feed ourselves for 28 days, which is the standard of a, a UN. We have the food. You see, uh, being killed, go to Benue. I just came back from Benue looking for, rather than doing one, one hectare here and there, we want all the farmers to be in an area, contiguous farming. That is what the CBN and Mesa Association is doing now that will reduce the level of attack by insurgent. If you are a four kilometer away just with one hectare, and another man is a two kilometer away just with one hectare, it's easy to attack such a man. But if all of you are in a place about 50 hectares, and the insurgents will think twice. Mm. And to provide uh, security for the farmers there will be easy. Sharing movement of inputs will be easy. So now, we, the, the next, this planting season, we are encouraging contiguous farming in a place, and that will reduce this level of uh, uh, insecurity, mm -hmm. uh, attack on farmers. We could go on, a, on and on, but our time is uh, fast spent, and this is where we uh, would have to end the interview, sir. Thank mm -hmm. you for joining us on the program, Engineer Joseph Bamidele. He is the National Coordinator and Assistant Secretary General at the Maze Association of Nigeria. Thank you again for coming on the program, sir. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Now we shall be going on a short break, and when I come back, I'll bring you the Cosmopolitan Market News. Please stay tuned. <laughs>